Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my October wrap up. So we are not gonna pretend that this isn't exactly the same place that my book haul is gonna be filmed in or has been filmed in, but you'll be seeing it after this video. But yeah, I'm on my lunch break. I don't seem to have time to film anymore. It's kind of horrific. Um, but yeah, I am taking advantage of a lunch break to film my wrap up for you guys. So I hope you appreciate it. Also, I'm gonna address it. I did in the last one. Please ignore the stain of fake blood in my eyebrow. It is not there on purpose. The 24 hour lipstick is getting closer to 48 now. It does not wanna come off. But yeah, with that being said, let's just start the wrap up, shall we? Originally, I did think that October was a pretty crappy month, but looking at the stats, I've smashed it. So I read 16 books, which I know is massive for lots and lots of people, but to me, that sounded like quite a negative number. I was like, only 16 books? Um, because I'm used to reading between 20 and 30, like I did 30 books in 30 days twice this year. Um, so yeah, I was a little bit disappointed, but then I looked at the stats. Those 16 books were 6,412 pages, which in September I read 21 books and I read 6,061 pages. So I read five less books, but more pages, which is nuts. Similarly with August, I read 17 books, so only one more book, but over 1,000 less pages. So I've smashed it if I do say so myself. Across those books, nine of them were physical books and seven of them were audiobooks. I've been really, um, I was gonna say enjoying audiobooks. I've been using audiobooks, but you'll be seeing from my reviews, they've not been going that well. Um, but I have been using audiobooks a lot this month with going back to the office. Um, it's been a little bit useful for me to just plug some audiobook in and like blank everyone out even though that sounds very rude but that is what I've been doing um and uh, the ratings across the books we still haven't had a five star I haven't had a five star book since June or July at this stage but I had one four and a half star five four stars two three and a half stars five three stars and three books I didn't rate which gives me an average rating of a 3.6 stars which has gone up I'm, I'm getting there but I just seem to not be giving anything five stars. It's very annoying. So starting off as I usually do with the books I didn't rate, the first one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So thank you again to Shannon from 155 Books for gifting me this gorgeous copy. Um, but yeah, I didn't rate this one because I still don't really know what happened. It sounds really bad, so I used the audiobook of this because I knew that I wasn't in the mood for the dense, like, classic writing. So I popped the audiobook on, and I did actually decide to annotate this one. So when I was listening and reading along at the same time, I was highlighting my favourite quotes, um, which there are quite a few in here, but I seem to only be able to do that when I was sat staring at the book as I was listening along. If I just listened, I missed so much. And yeah, turns out I still don't really know the story of Frankenstein. So I have read it. I'm not rating it because I don't think I paid enough attention and I will be keeping hold of this gorgeous copy and potentially revisiting it next spooky season um to try and give it another go because i do really want to love this and some of the quotes i picked out were amazing i just don't really know what happened another book i didn't rate was norse mythology by neil gaiman so this one i did enjoy it um i feel like i have learned a little bit about norse mythology just like slowly dipping my toes in um but neil gaiman has rewritten not like reconstructed just like jazzed up the explanations of some of the Norse myths in this book and I listened to the audiobook which he himself narrated and I didn't take a lot of it in so he's a very very passionate guy about it and I found it amazing listening to him talk it was so relaxing but I wasn't really paying attention I was just relaxing so no rating okay and the final book I didn't rate was Unnatural Causes by Dr Richard Shepherd which believe it or not, was another audiobook. Um, this is a non-fiction book about the doctor's experiences with being a forensic pathologist and some of the high profile cases he's worked on. It was very interesting. Like as I was listening, I thought this is so, so good. I need to recommend this to everyone. But now I've put it down. So I only finished it last week and I can't really tell you anything. It's gone completely over my head, 
but it was a very relaxing and enjoyable experience to listen to it but I can't really give you much on it now so another one that got no rating from me but then we go straight into the three stars if you are not uh, if you've not been on my channel a while you maybe won't know but for me a three star rating is a good book it's just not an amazing book so I didn't have any books I read this month which I outright hated which is a success but the three stars the first one is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, which I did listen to the audio, but I had the physical book at the same time. This book, I did enjoy it. There were some really, really good ones in here. This is a collection of essays about the world and human life and how we're living. And I, as I said, I did enjoy it. Um, especially there was one on the penguins of Madagascar. Like that was cool. I like the penguins of Madagascar. Um, but a lot of it just went over my head. Like I wasn't really interested in everything he had to say, which I know is kind of rude. It was narrated by him and it felt a bit like a podcast, like I could tune in and tune out whenever I wanted. So it didn't make such a lasting impression on me, but I'm glad I gave it a chance. I'm glad I picked it up and it did make me chuckle and cry and whatever else but I just didn't really love it. Next, we have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, which is another one where I had the audiobook and I had the physical book, but I mainly listened to the audiobook. It wasn't actually an audiobook. It was a teacher reading it to her students, which I found very useful because before she started a next chapter, she would kind of summarize what went on, which I really felt like helped my reading experience, which probably means I'm not paying enough attention, but I did actually enjoy how it was told to me. This one is a dystopian world where people kind of, people's lives are pretty much more in virtual reality than they are in the normal world. And there's a big game where the creator of the VR world that they all go into has died. And to to basically secure his will for yourself, you have to complete his game. And our main character is having a go at completing his game. And that's all I'll say. It was an enjoyable time. I know a lot of people absolutely love it. Um, I had fun, but I didn't really get all of the, like, I don't wanna say retro. I don't know what decade it was supposed to be set in, like supposed to be based on all the games. Um, but yeah, I didn't really understand all the game references. And I feel like that would have really improve my reading experience if I did understand things like that but overall it was a good time. I've just realised I have none of these books to hold up because I've been brutal with unhauling and audiobooks this month. So the next one is Spare Room by Drida Say Mitchell. This was a adult thriller about a woman who moves into a house. She starts renting the spare room and she's getting iffy vibes from the couple who own the house. Um, it does spiral down and it turns out there's more of a reason for her being there and things like that. But you know what? I might have to lower this rating. It was very, very creepy. So I live alone and I was listening to it late at night and I was like looking over my shoulder at shadows and it was creeping me out. It wasn't even supposed to be that creepy, but it was creeping me out. So the feeling it gave me was at least a three star, but I don't really remember much about the story. And it is one that I think if you see it as an audiobook, give it a go, but I'm not gonna tell you all to rush out and buy it. Uh, next, we had an interesting book. I read Daddy's Angel by K.A. Knight and um, you know what? A solid three stars for enjoyment. This is about our main character whose name I do not remember but we know that the love interest calls her Angel and let's just call her Angel for the sake of this review. She um, is in a relationship and she's not very happy but she's kind of chugging along um, as many people do in the world. She's chugging along, turns up to a party to celebrate her boyfriend's dad's birthday. She meets the dad and instantly she is overwhelmingly attracted to him. And this is a whole book about him calling her angel and her calling him daddy. And that is pretty much it. It is full on smut and it was three stars for enjoyment. The final three star book I read was Thirst Number no. 2 by Christopher Pike. This is another collection of the last vampire books. I don't remember what they're exactly called in this one and I would be able to look but I've already unhauled this and given it to Tony so I hope Tony enjoys them. The first two books in this collection were solid three star reads for me. They were enjoyable. I enjoyed all of the like vampire lore in it. I enjoyed all of the modern day ways that mixes in. 
But then the third book was such a disappointment and I thought like the whole way through that it was gonna be a one star and drag the whole book down. The ending did redeem it. So I gave the collection as a whole three stars overall, but it definitely was not as good as Thirst number one. I do still have number three somewhere buried over here. Um, so I will be reading it. I will be giving it a chance, but I don't have the highest hopes after how that last one left off. Um, but yeah, it was... It was an interesting time and some of the stories are good so I would definitely recommend the last vampire series um it's very 90s vampires but it's a good time next I read uh, Beauty and the Beast the novelization by a collection of authors and um, this was one it was literally the audiobook of the book based on the movie so yeah the original story went into the Disney movie the Disney movie has then been revamped to the new movie and that one has been written down into a book which i listened to the audiobook are you following um but yeah i gave this one three and a half stars it was a pretty nice time i think it's mainly just because i love that movie so much it was like i was working with the movie in the background i just wasn't actually looking up at any time i was just enjoying the words sadly they didn't put the songs in of course um which was a little bit weird i was expecting them to start happening and obviously they don't it's an audiobook um but i had a very good time with it and if you really love the movie i found the audiobook and gave it a go and it was a good time um i just don't think it's not the next best literary masterpiece but it was a good time how many times have i said good time and yes, the first book I can hold up since the non-rated Frankenstein. The next book I gave three and a half stars to was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. So this was my book club pick for this month for Chloe's Crime Scene Corner. I will link the announcement video if you don't know what I'm talking about. But this one is a book about H.H. H. Holmes and his murder castle in Chicago. But at the same time, it's also about the opening of Chicago's World Fair in 1893, which I knew nothing about. So I wanted to give this book five stars. Some of the Holmes chapters were were absolutely amazing they left me with chills but we did have to learn a lot about the architecture of Chicago and the building of the World Fair which at the beginning was not very interesting so I was going to give it three stars with the kind of not enjoying the fair and really really enjoying the Holmes chapters but then this author wrote this so so well that I genuinely started to care about the success of the fair and what was going on. So I had to give it an extra half a star just for the fact I started to care. It was absolutely amazing at times. This is one that I have gone through and I'm trying to find an example. I have been highlighting all of the stuff about Holmes and what he did and how the murder castle was set up, things like that. Because I, oh wow, that was a big one. Um, Because I do want to film a dedicated video about H.H. H. Holmes and everything that went on, which I also want to do for Dennis Nielsen, which was the first true crime book we read in my book club so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in if maybe you don't want to read all about Chicago's World Fair but you do want to know what this man got up to but yeah I had a great time reading this in my book club this month and I'm very excited for next month's pick which is Tender as the Flesh by Augustina Bastarica and I will be starting that a week today so I'm so excited for it it's gonna be great Next, onto the four star books. The first one I read is Fallen by Lauren Kate. So I read this way back when, like kind of when it came out, I wanna say about 2012. Oh, it came out in 2009, so I actually don't know when I read this. But back then I read the whole series and really loved it. And then the books kind of just stayed on my shelves forever and I didn't know what to do with them. So I unhauled everything but the first book. That was years ago and I decided I really needed to reread it to see what it was all about because I couldn't remember anything. And oh my God, I really enjoyed this. This was such an easy YA paranormal time. It was such, such a relaxing read, but there was so much drama in it at the same time, if that makes sense. I felt like after I read things, I did remember that's what happened, but reading it, there was so much like tension and suspense because I couldn't remember where it was going. And yeah, it was really, really fun. So I would definitely recommend this series if you'd like that kind of early 2010s nostalgia because it was really fun next up the next four star book i read is simon versus the homo sapiens agenda by becky albertalli this was another reread for me and on my first read i listened to the audiobook and gave this five stars so i decided to go back in and read the physical book and see what i thought so there's a loud vehicle i'm sorry I did have to bring this down a star because I feel like the main thing that makes this book really enjoyable is guessing the identity of Blue. So this is about Simon who is 16 and he is emailing Blue from his school. He doesn't know who Blue is and he is gay and coming to terms with it and so is Blue. 
So when you read this book the first time, you just want to know who Blue is because that is like the main mystery of the story. So reading it the second time, I knew who Blue was, but I really did still enjoy the story. So four stars is an amazing rating for me. Um, it just didn't give me those five star feels with the shock of reading it the first time. I am going to unhaul this one, even though I gave it four stars, just because I will not be able to like... Even though I knew who Blue was when I was reading this, there was some part of my brain that said, what if you're wrong? Um, this time, if I read it again, I would know that I was right. So I just don't wanna read it and like bring my rating down again because I just don't have that mystery element. But it was a really good time and I would thoroughly recommend this book. Next, I read Angel Fire by Ale Weatherly, which is a 700 page absolute whopper. This is the sequel to Angel, um, where we have Willow, who is a half angel, and she is trying to take down the Church of Angels. So the Church of Angels is a community of actual angels who are portraying that they're like helping humanity and are amazing, but, but they're actually giving them incurable diseases and extreme cases of illness. And Willow knows this, she can see it happening, but the whole world seems to be brainwashed. So I can't say much about this book being the second book, but this involves Willow, Alex, and a character called Seb. And it is such a fun time. This again is the early 2010s nostalgia. This one was 2011. If you want YA, angels, a love triangle. Oh my god, I had a good time. And yeah, maybe it only didn't get five stars because it did not need to be this long. This was quite a lot. I think book three is shorter, but I do have that one ready to read. Next, another reread. I read A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan, which again got four stars. This was such a fun time. This is the cutest book about um, Violet, who moves to the town of Perfect with her parents, but what she just gets an off feeling about it and everybody has to wear these rose tinted glasses so they don't go blind and she just doesn't think that everything is as perfect as it seems and she teams up with a kid called Boy um, to try and save perfect from being too perfect when on the reality it is not perfect. I've just said perfect about eight times. This is the sweetest middle grade ever. If you want to be creeped out by like plants that grow eyes, but you want it to be a really cute time at the same time, then read this book. I'm going to be reading the sequel for the first time in November. So I actually might start it tomorrow. So I'm very, very excited. And the last four star book I read is Frozen Charlotte by Alex Ball. This one was, again, so fun. This is a YA horror about these tiny porcelain dolls called Frozen Charlottes, and they are horrifying. So this book, the story probably only got a three star from me, but I was so creeped out. Like I had to sleep with the light on some nights. I currently still have to sleep with music playing. I can't do the silence. Um, give me like a dead child in the corner and music boxes that play and things grabbing ankles. No, no, I was not okay. This really, really scared me, even though it's meant to be for children. Um, I was horrified. It does say not for younger readers, but I don't think they included 23 in that. I think they meant a lot younger than that. Um, but yeah, I was horrified by this. I was very, very scared. And even talking about the dolls and the child in the corner, my back's gone funny. It's the middle of the day and I'm checking corners read this book it's very scary <laughs> and finally the best book of the month and i did not know i was going to be saying this i really really did not think this was going to be so good for me and that is queen of shadows by sarah by sarah j mass this is book number four in the throne of glass series and i did not have high hopes i really enjoyed throne of glass and crown of midnight they were both between four and five stars but then i read air of fire a couple months ago and i just did not have a good time with it I was very confused all of the time and um, yeah, it was kind of a slog to get through. But this one, oh my God. I know it's not the main premise of the book, but the sexual tension in this, some of it was better than some Sarah J Mass smut. Like I love some mass smut, but the sexual tension, I was on edge, like it was amazing. Um, but okay, I can't really tell you much about this book because it's book number four. But the first book follows Selena Sardothian who enters a competition to become the king's champion to save herself from the slave mines of Endovia. I want to say it's Endovia. I may have made that place up. Um, but yeah, then it turns out there's a lot more about this girl than it seems. 
we're now really into what's more about her than it seems and oh my god i had such an amazing time it is a chunker um and marlene is holding me accountable for continuing the series i have said i will finish the series by the end of 2022 so i have three more books to go and i'm gonna try my best to do it so there we go that is my whole wrap up of the month i am pretty proud of myself actually as i said it was only 16 books but to be nearly 6,500 pages, I read some whoppers. I really did. Um, but let me know if you've read any of these books, if you really enjoy them, if you have any recommendations, like depending on what I like, if you have something you think I should read. I don't know where I've gone on this. I'm starting to go insane. I need some lunch. I, I need food. I'm struggling. But that was my wrap up for October. So thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.